Hello everyone, today in this video I am going to deal with the 6th chapter of Beehive of class 9th. The chapter is My Childhood. This chapter My Childhood has been taken from the autobiography of EPJ Abdul Kalam. The name of his autobiography is Wings of Fire. Now before I move to text, let me introduce you to EPJ Abdul Kalam. Abdul Kalam, one of 1st October 1931 till 27 July 2015 was an Indian aerospace scientist and politician who served as the 11th president of India from 2002 to 2007. He was born and raised in Rameswaram, Tamil Nadu and studied physics and aerospace engineering. He spent the next four decades as a scientist and science administrator, mainly at DRU and ISRO and was intimately involved in India's civilian space program and military missile development efforts. He came to be known as Missile Man of India. So this was a brief introduction of APJ Abdul Kalam. Now let's move to the text. I was born into middle class Tamil family in the island town of Rameswaram in the rest while Madras. My father Janul Abdeen had neither much formal education nor much wealth. Despite these disadvantages, he possessed great innate wisdom and true generosity of spirit. He had an ideal helpmate in my mother, Ashima. I do not recall the exact number of people she fed every day, but I am quite certain that far more outsiders ate with us than all the members of our own family would take it together. So here this paragraph starts with I. I here is for APJ Abdul Kalam. He is narrating his story of his childhood in his own words through this chapter. So he says that he was born in a middle class Tamil family in Rameswaram which was earlier in Madras. The name of his father is Janul Abdi and the name of his mother is Asima. He says that his father was not wealthy and he even don't have formal education but he, but he says that he had the quality of generosity. He was very generous and he possessed all the human quality which a human being should have. And he says about his mother that she used to fit a number of people every day. I was one of many children, a short boy with rather undistinguished looks, born to tall handsome parents who lived in our ancestral house which was built in the middle of 19th century. It was fairly large pakka house made of limestone and brick on the mosque street in Rameshwaram. My Austrian father who used to avoid all inessential comforts and luxuries. However, all necessities were provided for in terms of food, medicine or clothes. In fact, I would say mine was a very secure childhood both materially and emotionally. So in this paragraph he says that his house which was very large, it was pakka house made up of limestone and brick was situated on Mosque Street in Rameshwaram and he says that his father was very strict and simple person. He has provided him with all the basic requirements, all necessities but he has put them away, put them, kept them away from the comforts, comforts and luxuries of life. The Second World War broke out in 1939 when I was 8 years old for reason I have never been able to understand a certain sudden demand of tamarind seeds erupted in market. I used to collect the seeds and sell them to provision shop on Mosque Street. A day's collection would fetch me princely sum of one another. So in this part he says that when the World War Second World War broke out at that time he was 8 years old and then he says that suddenly there was a great demand of tamarind seeds in the market. 
and he says that even till now he is not able to understand that why there was such a sudden demand of tamarind seeds in the market and he says that he used to collect that tamarind seeds and he used to sell it to the provision shop which was there on the mosque street and in return he used to earn a princely sum of banana so he was child at that time and at that time for him one anna was a big amount and therefore he says princely sum my brother in law jalaluddin would tell me stories about the war which i would later attempt to trace in the headlines in dinamani our area being isolated was completely unaffected by the war but soon india was forced to join the allied forces and something like a state of emergency was declared so now what he says in this part he says that his brother in law jalaluddin he used to narrate him different stories related to world war which was going on at that time and he says that he used, he used to try to find out all these stories narrated by his brother in law jalaluddin in the headlines of newspaper in dinamani and he says that his area was isolated it is a separate area and therefore he says that it was not affected by the war but he says but he says that as soon as the indian army the forces of india india was forced to join world war he says that in even in his area a state of emergency was declared the first casualty casualty came in the form of suspension of train halt at rameswaram station the newspaper now had to be bundled and thrown out from moving train on rameswaram road between rameswaram and dhanush kodi that forced my cousin samsudin who distributed newspaper in rameswaram to look for a helping hand to catch the bundles and if naturally i filled the slot samsudin helped me earn my first wages half a century later i can still feel the surge of pride in earning my own money for the first time so now what he says that as a state of emergency was declared in india and as soon as the state of emergency was declared the effect of which effect of it was felt in rameswaram as well so what happened the effect was that that now the train coming to rameswaram was not going to stop at rameswaram station as a result what happened the newspaper which used to come by train now it was supposed to be thrown out of moving train at rameswaram on rameswaram road between rameswaram and dhanushkodi so now he says that his cousin samsudin he used to distribute newspaper he was a newspaper vendor in rameswaram so now he says that now he was looking for a helping hand to collect the newspaper which was being thrown on road between rameswaram and dhanushkodi so he says that samsudin for this job he hired apj abdul kalam that is for collecting the newspaper which was being thrown on rameswaram road so he says apj abdul kalam here says that this was his first job and he earned the first wages from this job only and he says that he felt very proud once when he returned sorry when he earned the money from his first job and he says even after 50 years he can feel the pride the happiness which he felt for the first time when he earned his first wages every child is born with some inherited characteristic into a specific socio economic emotional environment and trained in certain ways by figure of authority i mean i inherited honesty and self discipline from my father from my mother i inherited faith in goodness and deep kindness and so did my three brothers and sister so now he says that every child is born with certain qualities and they learn something from their parents here figures of authority refers to parents so he says that he learned honesty and self discipline from his father and he learned goodness and deep kindness from his mother and so did his three brother and sister 
so even his brothers and sister learned these quality from his parent from their mother and father so now he says i had three close friends in my childhood ramananda shastri aravindan and shiva prakash and all these boys were from orthodox hindu fam brahmin families as children none of us ever felt any difference amongst ourselves because of our religious difference and upbringing in fact ramananda shastri was the son of pakshi lakshman shastri the highest priest of rameshwaram temple later he took over the priesthood of rameshwaram temple from his father arvindam went into the business of arranging transport for visiting pilgrims and shiva prakashan became a catering contractor for the southern railway so now in this part he says that during his childhood he had three friends the name is being given over here the name of his friend was ramananda shastri arvindam and shiva prakashan and all these three boys he says that belongs to a brahmin orthodox family but even though they belong from a brahmin family and this boy apj abdul kalam he was muslim but he says even then they never felt any differences among themselves among them on the basis of religion and on the basis of their upbringing and on the basis of their culture and he says that later on all of that three of his friend went into different profession so ramananda shastri he became the priest of rameshwaram temple arvindam he started arranging transport for visiting pilgrims and shiva prakashan he informs that he became catering contractor for southern railway so all of them went into different profession during the annual sri sita rama kalyanam ceremony our family used to arrange boats with a special platform for carrying idols of lord from the temple to the marriage site situated in the middle of the pond called rama tirth which was near our house event from ramayanas and from the life of prophet were bed time stories my mother and grandmother could tell the children in our family so this paragraph shows the religious tolerance of this family that they had a very broad thinking and they respect each and every religion he says that his father used to arrange a special boat with a special platform for carrying the idol of lord rama from temple to the marriage site which was in the middle of the pond so there was a ritual there was a ceremony which was organized every year that was known as sri sita rama kalyanam ceremony and in that ceremony the idols of lord rama was to be carried to the pond which in the middle of the pond for the marriage and it was a marriage site and this was regarded as rama tirth so for this ceremony his father used to provide boats and he says that during bed time that is before sleeping his mother as well as his grandmother used to narrate different stories to the children to his brothers and sister and that story particularly used to be from ramayana or from the life of prophet or that is from quran one day when i was in fifth standard at rameshwaram elementary school a new teacher came to our class i used to wear cap which marked me as a muslim and i always sat in the front row next to ramananda shastri who wore the sacred thread the new teacher could not stomach us hindu priest son sitting with a muslim boy in accordance in occurred in accordance with social ranking as the new teacher saw it i was asked to go and sit on the back bench i felt very sad and so did ramananda shastri he looked utterly downcast as i shifted to my seat in the last row the image of him weeping when i shifted to the last row left a lasting impression on me so in this paragraph he narrates one incident of his school 
when he was in primary school elementary school is primary school so he says that when he was in primary school a new teacher came in his class and when he saw him when he saw kalam sitting in the front row and that too with a brahmin boy and that to the boy was son of priest of rameshwaram temple he was not able to digest it he was orthodox and therefore what he did he asked kalam to go and sit in the last row of that class according to the social hierarchy that is it means it was divided the classroom the sitting arrangement of that classroom was divided on the basis of religion and caste and therefore as he was muslim he was asked to sit in the last row of that class so when he was asked to go at the back he felt very bad and even ramananda shastri felt very bad for that and even ramananda shastri started weeping there was tear in his eye and when abdul kalam saw tears in the eye of ramananda shastri he was very much touched after school we went to home and told our respective parents about the incident lakshman shastri summoned the teacher and in our presence told the teacher that he should not spread the poison of social inequality and communal intolerance in the minds of innocent children he bluntly asked the teacher to either apologize or quit the school and island not only did the teacher regret his behavior but the strong sense of conviction lakshman shastri lakshmana shastri conveyed ultimately reformed this young teacher so after this incident when they reached back to their home abdul kalam and ramananda shastri both of them narrated this story to their parents so when parents come to know about this story after that what happened lakshman shastri who was the priest of rameshwaram temple he called that teacher and he asked him not to spread these negative emotions this negative message in the mind of student and he says that this type of thing should not be taught to children and then he asks the teacher to apologize or to quit that island so from this incident that a young teacher it is being informed by abdul kalam that this incident gave a strong message to that young teacher and after that he was totally reformed his orthodox feeling he was now he did not try to thirst his orthodox feeling to the children and never he ever try to teach again this type of thing to the children in the classroom on the whole the small society of rameshwaram was very rigid in term of segregation of different social groups however my science teacher subramanyam ayer though an orthodox brahmin with a very conservative wife was something for her offer away he did his best to break social barriers so that people from varying backgrounds could mingle easily he used to spend hours with me and could say kalam i want you to develop so that you are on par with highly educated people of the big cities so in this paragraph he has named his one of his teacher shiva subramanyam ayer so he says that his teacher his science teacher he was a orthodox brahmin he belongs from orthodox brahmin family and but he was not of conservative thought he don't have orthodox thought his thought was quite white but his wife was very conservative so he says that that teacher the teacher of science he was a sort of someone who was sort who was preaching people or who was trying to break all the social barriers the barriers which were set on the basis of religion on the basis of caste he had a very good reason he did not believe in religion and caste and he has tried his best to break all those barriers so that the people of various 
religion the people of different religion and people of different culture and caste they could live with each other they should spend time to with each other that borders that distinction should be should come to an end and that science teacher he used to spend a lot of time with kalam and he used to say to him that i want to be i want you to study more and more and i want to see you on par with highly educated people of big cities so he says that i want you to be equivalent i want you to be equivalent to those people of the cities who are quite highly educated one day he invited me to his home for a meal his wife was horrified at the idea of muslim boy being invited to dine in her ritually pure kitchen she refused to serve me in kitchen shiva subramanyam ayer was not perturbed not did he get angry with his my wife but instead served me with his own hands and sat beside me to eat his meal his wife watched us from the behind from behind the kitchen door i wondered whether she had observed any difference in the way i ate rice drank water or cleaned the floor after the meal when i was leaving his house shiva subramanyam ayer invited me to join for dinner again the next weekend observing my hesitation he told me not to get upset saying once you decide to change the system such problem have to be confronted i visited his house next week subramanyam ayer's wife took me inside her kitchen and served me food with her own hands so now in this part he says that his science teacher shiva subramanyam ayer once he invited him to his house for me as in the last paragraph it is being said that he do not believe in the caste and religion system he had a very broad thought process but his wife was very conservative so when his wife come to know about that invitation that his husband that her husband has invited a muslim child to his house that to for meal she was very horrified to know that and he went abdul kalam went and the wife of shiva subramanyam ayer refused to serve food to him so subramanyam ayer he himself served food to abdul kalam and he sat beside him to have food and he says that while they were having food the wife of his science teacher she was observing him while he was eating throughout continuously she was observing him from the back of the door so while he was living after meal shiva subramanyam ayer his science teacher asked him to join him for the dinner so again he invited him for dinner on next weekend so one so when he invited him for dinner he was hesitant he saw he has seen that his wife was not comfortable when he comes his home and therefore he was hesitant he was not willing to come again but when he saw when ayer when his science teacher saw that he was unwilling and he was feeling hesitant at that time he says that if you want to change the society you will have to face this type of things so don't be afraid of all this type of thing you will face this type of thing these challenges will come and these are the things which is to be won upon so next weekend again he went on dinner and this time the wife of his science teacher she herself served food to him then second world war was over and india's freedom was imminent indians will build their own india declared gandhi ji the whole country was filled with unprecedented optimism i asked my father for permission to leave rameshwaram and study at the district headquarters in ramanatham ramanath pura so now the second world war came to an end 
and the India was about to get freedom. Then at that time, he says that he asked his father. He took permission from his father so that he may take, so that he may leave Ramaswaram. It means he should, he may be able to go to Ramanathpuram in order to pursue his education. Which was the district headquarter. So his district headquarter was Ramanathpuram. So he asked permission. He asked his father for permission so that he may allow him to leave Ramaswaram, so that he may continue his for further studies. He told me, if thinking aloud, Abul, I know you have to go away to grow. Does the seagull not fly across the sea alone? And without a nest, he quoted Khalil Gibran to my hesitant mother, your child are not your children. They are sons and daughters of life longing for itself. They come through you but not from you. You may give them your love but not your thoughts for they have their own thoughts. So when his mother, when the mother of Abdul Kalam come to know that he was going to leave Ramaswaram, he was going to Ramanath Pura to continue his higher study. She grew anxious, she was worried and then his father told her that no doubt he is your child, he has come in this world through you, he is your son but he has not come from you. He told her that you are just a medium. You are just a medium who gave birth to this child, but he has come. He is a gift of God. Every child is a gift of God. We love them. No doubt we give them a lot of love and we try our best to give them all facilities of life, but we can't give our thought, we can't force our thoughts on the child of children because they have their own thoughts and he gave the example of seagull the father of Abdul Kalam gave him the example of seagull that the seagull as seagull used to fly across the sun alone and without nest so he says that as seagull used to go from one place to another without any nest. Similarly, you will have to go a long way to achieve success in your life, to achieve everything in your life, whatever you want to achieve in your life. And therefore, this is how he permitted him to go to Ramanath Puram for his higher studies and even he convinced his mother to allow him to go to Ramanath Puram to continue his studies. So this is all about this chapter. If you have any doubt, write in our comment box. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video.